it's Miss May from the Frankfurt Community Public Library again, and I'm here for another week of stories, songs, and rhymes. This week's theme is primates. Do you know what primates are? Monkeys and apes are primates. Do you know how to tell a monkey and an ape apart? Well, this week we're going to find out. So, a couple of my favorites are orangutans, which are apes, and tamarins, which are monkeys. But now, let's get started with our welcome song. Here, here, we're all here. Here, here, we're all here. Here, here, we're all here. We're all here for story time. A key, a key, Toto's a key, a key, a key, Toto's a key. another song for you. It's called the Itsy Bitsy Monkey. The Itsy Bitsy Monkey climbed up the coconut tree. <gasps> Down came a coconut that popped him on the knee. Along came his mama to kiss away the pain. Then the Itsy Bitsy Monkey climbed up the tree again. Oh. Here's a story called One Gorilla. Accounting Book by Anthony Brown, with permission from Candlewick Press. One Gorilla. Two Orangutans. Three Chimpanzees. Four Mandrills. Five baboons. Six gibbons. Seven spider monkeys. Eight macaques. Nine colobus monkeys. Ten lemurs. All primates. All one family. All my family. And yours. Monkeys. Monkey see, monkey do. Little monkey at the zoo. Monkey, monkey in a tree. Can you swing your arms like me? Monkey see, monkey do, little monkey at the zoo. Monkey, monkey in a tree, can you scratch an itch like me? Monkey see, monkey do, little monkey at the zoo. Monkey, monkey in a tree, can you eat a banana like me? Monkey see, monkey do, little monkey at the zoo. Monkey, monkey, in a tree, can you clap your hands like me? Monkey see, monkey do, little monkey at the zoo. Monkey, monkey, in a tree, can you stamp your feet like me? Monkey see, monkey do, little monkey at the zoo. Monkey, monkey, in the tree, can you make a funny face like me? Monkey see, monkey do, little monkey at the zoo. Monkey, monkey in a tree, can you turn around like me? Here's a story for you called Monkey Face. One day, monkey decided to draw a picture of his mother. There she is. As he left school, he went walking home, and he ran into Owl. And he showed Owl his picture, and he said, Owl, how do you like the picture I drew of my mother? And Owl said, it's okay, but her eyes are much too small. So, Monkey gave her some bigger eyes. And he said, how's that, Owl? And Owl said, that's much better. So Monkey continued on his way. 
And he ran into Alligator, and he said, Alligator, how do you like the picture I drew of my mother? And Alligator said, well, it's pretty good, but she needs some bigger teeth. So he gave her bigger teeth. And he continued on his way. But as he was walking, he ran into Rabbit. And he showed Rabbit his picture and he said, Rabbit, how do you like the picture I drew of my mother? And Rabbit said, it's all right, but her ears need to be much bigger. So Monkey said, all right. And he gave her some bigger ears. And then he continued on his way. And as he was walking home, he ran into Giraffe, and he said, Giraffe, what do you think about the picture of my mother? And he said, that's really good, except her neck needs to be a little bit longer. And Monkey said, okay. So he drew her a longer neck, and he said, how's that, Giraffe? And Giraffe said, oh, that's much better. So Monkey continued on his way, and as he was walking, he ran into Lion, and he asked Lion, what do you think about the picture of my mother? And Lion said, it's really good, except her mane needs to be a little fluffier. So Monkey said, okay. And he gave her a fluffier mane. He said, how's that, Lion? And Lion said, ooh, that's much better. And Monkey continued on his way. And he ran into Elephant. And he asked Elephant, how do you like the picture of my mother? An elephant said, that is really nice, but her nose needs to be longer. So he said, okay, and the monkey gave her a longer nose. An elephant said, that's just right. So monkey finally made it home, and he went in and he said, mom, mom, I drew a picture of you today. Do you want to see it? And she said, of course I do, monkey. He said, okay, so we showed her, and she said, oh, monkey, that's the best picture that anyone has ever drawn of me. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, now it's time to take a field trip to the Columbian Park Zoo. Are you ready to go with me? All right, so I need you to close your eyes, and we're going to count to three, and when I say open your eyes, we'll be at the zoo. Are you ready? Here we go. Close your eyes. One, two, three. Open your eyes. Hi friends, I'm here today with our friend Jasmine from the Columbian Park Zoo. Hi everybody. And she's gonna tell us a little bit about their primates that they have here. Yes, I'm so glad you guys were able to join us today. I am one of the year-round educators here at Columbian Park Zoo, and we are currently in front of our spider monkey exhibit. So primates as a whole are a group of mammals that generally have large brains, opposable thumbs, live in social groups, and are usually found in Forest, so rainforest, tropical forest, places where they can really climb and move around. And spider monkeys are a great primate to look at that. So over here, we have a group of five female spider monkeys in our current troop. And right now, they are currently foraging for their breakfast. So here at our zoo, we know that this is not the rainforest of Central or South America where they usually live. So we want to make sure that they get a lot of exercise and a lot of mental stimulation. So a way for them to be able to get some of those natural behaviors is by using some of the fun things that we have in our exhibit. So we have lots of different branches, we have ropes, we will sometimes hide their food in buckets or puzzle feeders. We have fire hose toys that we make here at the zoo. So they get lots of opportunities, lots of enrichment. So ways for them to bring out some of those natural behaviors and make sure that their day at the zoo isn't just boring, sitting around, eating, just looking at people. So they really get a lot of exercise, a lot of play time here at the zoo. Now, what's really cool about spider monkeys is even though most primates, like us, have opposable thumbs, they actually don't have any thumbs. They just have four really long fingers that work like a hook to allow them to swing all over the branches and all over the rainforest. 
first where they're naturally from. The name spider monkey comes from their long arms and limbs and, of course, that long tail. If you look at our female right over here, we've got Dancer right here. She's got her tail wrapped around the cage. Do you guys see that there? That is called a prehensile tail. So what that means is it's just like a fifth arm. So she can use it to grab onto branches. She can actually hold her entire weight, her entire body, just with her tail. So they are super, super strong, which is perfect for going through the trees. They usually like to eat a lot of different things. Here at the zoo, they get fruits and veggies, leafy greens, leaf eater biscuits, and then a specific primate diet, specifically for primates to make sure they get all their vitamins and nutrients. But some of their favorite treats are also things like hard-boiled eggs, uh, sugar-free jello, and of course, my favorite sandwich, a flutter nutter, a sandwich with peanut butter and marshmallow fluff. They go nuts. They love it. Now, we've learned a little bit about spider monkeys, but let's see if Maeve's got any questions for me. Maeve, what kind of questions do you have for me today? Okay, so where do they sleep? <gasps> Excellent question. So spider monkeys, especially our troop here, they feel most comfortable up really, really high. So spider monkeys usually sleep in the canopies of the rainforest, very, very top parts of the trees. Now the trees in the rainforest can get very, very big, over a hundred feet tall. But that's what they're built for. That's what they're most comfortable with. Spider monkeys and other primates even have a special patch of skin on their foot to help them sit on branches to make it feel a little bit more comfortable. It's like a thickened patch of skin. So they're going to sleep all the way up top up here. They don't sleep outside, especially in Indiana where it can get really hot or really cold depending on the time of the year. So they do come inside. They have their own indoor exhibit as well, but they're still going to sleep really high up in those branches. Cool. So that leads me to another question. Okay. Do they sleep at night like we do, or do they sleep during the day Excellent like other animals? Question. Yes. So most primates are usually diurnal. That's a big fancy word. What it means is they usually are awake during the day like us and do go to sleep at nighttime. There are a few exceptions to that rule, however. A lot of lemurs, so primates that live on the island of Madagascar, they are usually nocturnal. So that means they sleep during the day and are awake at nighttime. So spider monkeys, yes, they do sleep at nighttime just like us. So they've got a bedtime, usually around 8, 9 o'clock, just like me. <laughs> oh, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what else? Let's see, do they make any noises to talk to each other? Absolutely. Primates are very, very vocal animals. I mean, you can hear me blabber in my mouth the whole time here. Now, spider monkeys do have a lot of different types of vocalizations. They can make different types of screeches, growls, hisses, and chitters. And they usually use different sounds to communicate different things. So, if a spider monkey is talking to each other, you're usually going to hear a lot of chittering noises. So, it's like a little kind of low-pitched kind of chitter. When they get really upset, you're going to hear really high-pitched, almost barks. It kind of sounds a little bit like a dog, and that's when you know that a spider monkey is a little upset, a little angry is when you hear those barks. Now, sometimes spider monkeys will also make other noises to intimidate other animals. Let's say there's a kind of like a jaguar and they are going to bare their teeth and growl and hiss if they need to. So they do make a couple of different vocalizations. It just depends on their mood, just like us. Very cool. I never knew they made so many noises. Mm. Oh, I just heard a little bit right there. It's a little noise. So now we're going to move on to the gibbons and see what they're like. Welcome back everyone, Educator Jasmine here at Columbian Park Zoo, and now we are in front of one of our other primates here at the zoo, Valar Gibbons, and they are definitely checking us out this morning. We have a troop of two females, we have a mother-daughter pair, we have the older mother, Blondie, who's right at the top, right on that top branch, and then we have her younger daughter, Callie, right over here, on kind of this lower hang right over here. Now. You saw the spider monkeys earlier, and you noticed that the spider monkeys used their tails a lot when they were moving around in their enclosure. Now, what about the gibbons, though? You guys see any tails there? 
can not see anything. And that's because they are not monkeys like spider monkeys. Gibbons are actually in the ape family, just like us. So gibbons, simangs, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, humans, we are all apes. And the easiest way to tell the difference between a monkey and an ape is if it has a tail. If it has a tail, it's a monkey. If it doesn't have a tail, it's an ape. Easy peasy, right? Now, gibbons normally live in the rainforest in Asia, primarily in Malaysia and Indonesia, along with their other ape cousins, the orangutans. Now, what's really awesome about gibbons is they do have opposable thumbs like us, but theirs are really spaced far apart, almost down here, and they have super long fingers and very long arms. Their arms are actually longer than their legs, and they will swing through the trees, hand over hand, seamlessly through the rainforest. They can actually swing up to 30 miles per hour, and they can swing up to 50 feet in one single bound. As she's doing right there, look at that action. Now, what's really amazing about gibbons is their social structure. Some primates, like the monkeys that we saw earlier, usually live in really big troops, sometimes over hundreds of individuals. But gibbons live in what's called our nuclear family. So that means they live in small family groups, just like us. So it'll be a mother and a father and their young children living together. Once the children get old enough to go off on their own, they will go and start their new families in another habitat, in another patch of rainforest. So they are very tight knit animals and they are very social. But one thing that's best well known for gibbons is their song, their beautiful vocalizations. With them, usually very early in the morning and sporadically throughout the rest of the day, they will sing as a family unit that is almost hauntingly beautiful that you will hear all across the rainforest, almost up to two miles away. That's them reestablishing their bonds with each other and also establishing their territory from the other Gibbon families that live nearby. So here in Indiana, there are no other Gibbon families, but they're just making sure that any other Gibbons around know that this is their habitat. This is their territory here at Columbia Park Zoo. Now, just like the spider monkeys, they do eat a lot of different things, so they love fruits. Over 80% of their diet is fruit figs in particular they love. But they will also eat different fruit, uh, leafy greens, vegetables. Here at the zoo, they do also get leaf eater biscuits and primate diet. But out in the wild, they will also eat insects and bird eggs as well. So they're what we consider omnivores. So they eat both plants and animals, like humans as well. So gibbons are just really, really amazing animals. And it's always really fun to watch them. The early parts of the morning are the best times to come to the zoo and see them move around and foraging. Their exhibit is set up similar to the spider monkeys where they have lots of different things to do, lots of branches, ropes, they've got stumps, they've got puzzle feeders, but right now I think they're just checking us out a little bit. I think they're wondering to see if Maeve might have any more questions. Maeve, do you think you got any more questions for me about these guys? I do. Ooh, perfect. So, my, one of my questions I was just thinking about is monkeys will pick at each other. Do Ooh. the gibbons pick at each other too? And why do they do that? Excellent. So yes, gibbons and a lot of primates will pick at each other. That's what it looks like. It's like they're picking through each other's fur, their hair. What they're doing is they're grooming each other. And they'll do that for two main reasons. One, to reestablish bonds with one another to say, hey, I'm here for you. I care for you. I love you kind of thing. But they will also do that to pick up bugs in their fur. Gibbon fur especially is very thick and it helps whisk away any of the rain when it rains in the rainforest so they're not kind of waterlogged but sometimes bugs will get in there too so they're also picking out the bugs and eating them too so it, yeah. it's good cleaning good grooming behavior okay. for them to see so you might see some of that today uh, with the females but i think they're really just getting some of that morning workout routine <laughs> a little bit there everybody's gotta work out uh-huh <laughs> Um, so, another question I had, which I just lost, <laughs> um, is their teeth. I know that, isn't there a difference, or is there a difference between the kind of teeth that gibbons have and the kind of teeth that monkeys have? So, yes, there are slight differences. The shapes of the teeth are going to be a little bit the same, but with gibbons, 
since they do eat a much more varied diet from a spider monkey, their teeth are going to be very, very sharp. Since they do eat a lot of like insects and animals and that sort of thing, bird eggs, their teeth, the really sharp ones that are called canines that we have kind of right here on our mouth, theirs are going to be much more pronounced in a given. You can't see it right now. But if they got upset and you saw them open their mouth and show their teeth, you're going to see a lot of those really sharp teeth. So that's why gibbons are considered one of our potentially dangerous animals. So if they happen to get loose or uh, escape out into the animal house inside where they live and they happen to bite a person, it can do some serious damage. The spider monkeys have canines too, but theirs are a little bit smaller. And the way their teeth are spread out is a little bit different too. It's very different from our mouth, that's for sure. Okay. Do they like to share? It yeah. depends on what they're sharing. So just like humans, especially in regards to food, Sometimes they're willing to share food items and sometimes they are not, especially when it comes to their favorites. Oh, so the yes. gibbons in particular are usually very fond of like the really sweet fruits. So they usually are very fond of like grapes and berries and sometimes melons. They don't share those. No, we make separate piles for each individual because no, they will not share and sometimes fights will break out. Not so much with the gibbons, but definitely with the spider monkeys. Yeah, so it kind of just depends, but yeah. no, they're not the best at sharing. Not the best. <laughs> what about hugging? Do they give hugs to each other like we do? Hug is a little bit different because for us, we see a hug as an embrace, you know, fully embracing someone as a shot, sign of affection. Given and other monkeys don't necessarily hug, but they will sometimes do kind of a side hand over the shoulder and that's usually a sign of either affection or like a bond so not a full-on hug but a kind of little side they are they are awesome oh look we've got some of that grooming there so we've got blondie grooming Callie right now oh what a good mama she is does your mom ever do that to you groom your hair get it all nice maybe and clean maybe brush, brush it, it. Yes, yep. is exactly what they're doing. That's why I love Gibbons so much. They're just like families, just like ours, and it's great to see them act like that here at the zoo. Now, as much as we love our Gibbons here at Columbia Park Zoo, they're wild relatives out there in the rainforest of Indonesia and Malaysia are actually in a little bit of trouble right now. A lot of Gibbon species are actually considered endangered. So what that means is there's not very many of them left in the wild. And most of the gibbons are in danger because they're losing their rainforest habitat. Now a lot of the habitat that they live in is being converted, changed, into palm oil production. Now, what is palm oil? Have you guys even heard of that before? I did it, not before I even started working here. I had no idea what it was, but palm oil is in a lot of things that we humans use. Palm oil is found in over half of all processed foods, beauty products, and cleaning supplies. It's found in a ton of stuff. But don't worry, there is a way that we can actually help gibbons and their cousins orangutans as well. And it's super simple. All of you guys should be able to do it at home as long as someone, an adult with you, has a mobile device like this. They can access an app called the Palm Oil app. It's from our friends at the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. It's a free app that any mobile device can download. And it's going to look something like this. Here, I'm going to show you guys. Get a nice close-up. So this is what the app looks like. And what you can do is, if you're at the grocery store, and you want to buy something that uses sustainable palm oil, so palm oil that doesn't hurt gibbons and other wildlife that doesn't hurt the rainforest, you can find out which foods use good palm oil and which foods maybe don't use good palm oil. So, I have some tasty treats. Let's say you just finished up school. You're hankering for maybe some chocolate, a nice chocolate snack. So you can either choose between a chili bar or some chips of boy cookies. But wait, we just learned about the gibbons. You want to know which food has the sustainable palm oil, the good palm oil. Well, that's where we're going to bring out that app. All you have to do, you guys see that barcode there? That app has a nifty scanner where all you have to do is you get the scanner going. You start the scan. It's going to pop up like this. You're going to scan the barcode in the food. 
and it's going to tell you the rating. So Chips Ahoy here has a good rating, a yellow. So that means they're trying, they're doing lots of efforts to make sure that they have sustainable palm oil, but maybe they could do a little bit better. So let's see, let's go to try this chewy bar next. There we go. Now I gotta turn my thing here. Mmm, delicious. <gasps> Look at that. Chewy Bar, part of the PepsiCo company, is excellent. They are making remarkable strides towards using good, sustainable palm oil. So those are really simple, easy things we all can do at home. So whenever you guys go grocery shopping, tell your parents, tell your adults to get that free app and start scanning to see which foods have good palm oil and which foods can maybe use a little bit of a work, maybe get a replacement for your Chips Ahoy cookies. But I hope you guys enjoyed learning about our awesome primates. Maybe do you have any last questions for me? Nope. I, that was it. You got, gave us a lot of good information. I really Excellent. appreciate it. Perfect. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed learning about our spider monkeys and gibbons. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day, okay? Bye, guys! Bye. Okay, everybody, now it's time to go back to the library. So if you close your eyes again, I'm going to count to three, and then when I say open your eyes, we'll be back at the library. So close your eyes. One, two, three. Open your eyes. And one more rhyme for you. This one's called Three Little Monkeys. Three little monkeys sitting in a tree, eating bananas, just like me. One had a frown. One had a grin. One had banana all over his chin. I have a joke for you all. What kind of key opens a banana? You don't know? A monkey! Uh, okay, everybody, that's it for today. Now it's time for our goodbye song.